Uh, here we're doing a shark upgrade on how things are going. So what we're trying to do today is we're trying to measure the gear ratio of the motors. Now, um, currently I've put the car into drive and uh, in eco mode, which makes the front wheels turn without the rear wheels uh, turning. So the car estimates that we've got a 10 km per hour speed. So it is currently spinning at a fairly constant speed. So we've got the wheel uh, spinning slow enough that we can work out how many RPM the wheel is doing. At the moment, only one wheel is turning. The other wheel, the other wheel is stopped. So uh, that means that if both wheels were turning, they would be spinning at half the speed. So by looking at the at the speed of the um, of the wheel and then timing 10 turns uh, I've come to work out that is spinning uh, I can't really remember the numbers but um, I can also uh, I also have a printout in here of the motor speed so from working out the speed of the front motor which is at the moment is around 430 rpm and counting how long it takes for the wheel to go around um, 10 turns uh, i can work out that the speed of the, the gear ratio of the front drive unit is around about uh, uh, it's around about 12.9 or 13 to 1. Um, the rear motor does have a slightly taller gearing, which is kind of weird, you know, it should be the other way around. The rear motor should have a, a shorter gearing because that's where you need more, most of the torque. The other thing that I've also done is I've actually tried to figure out what the maximum speed of the rear drive unit is so that we could potentially work out uh, a better gear ratio. So. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply a torque uh, to the rear motor to make a spin until the drive unit stops it from increasing speed. Now, I've taken the, the wheels off because we don't really want those big tires spinning at some obscene speed. So, um, so the way to do, to do this is we use you know, our little box here. I've programmed this box so that when I press this button, I actually get a, a readout of the speed. And the main way, the main reason for that is so that I can, I can stop it uh, at, a, at any point in time and I can get a, a freeze of the data. So, uh, so my switches are set up for torque control of the rear motor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a positive torque and then apply a small value to make the wheels uh, spin. Now, even with a very small amount of torque, it will spin until it hits maximum speed. Now we can see from the yeah, reading, it tops out at about 16,000 RPM. Now, I've put a little bit of uh, reverse torque to slow it down. And I also found out that it does spin the same speed in reverse. So we get So we could actually drive this car in forwards or reverse at pretty much the same speed. <clears throat> so given the, um, the, assuming that the rear ratio has around about 11 to one, this is just a bit of a guess from, from the data that I've got when I drive it and I compare the RPM of the rear wheels, the rear motor and the front motor. Um, so, that basically means that this thing would have a top speed of 250 k's an hour, which is kind of pretty useless. So we could potentially re-gear the rear motor from, you know, the, the estimated 11 to 1 ratio to around about maybe a, a 15 to 1 or something like that, which would give us a top speed of, of 170 k's an hour, which is still pretty useless. Um, but we also have to consider the efficiency of the of the motor at highway speeds. So the main issue is that um, as the motor hits 
higher speeds eventually needs to go into field weakening and that makes it consume more current than what it really needs to do uh, to st uh, for you know for for, for keeping the speed. That's mainly because the back EMF from the motor uh, hits the battery voltage and then you've got to apply a current that weakens the magnets so that you can get higher speed. Now potentially this might not be a big issue if we, um, if we accept a little bit of inefficiency at highway speed and we can drop the the torque being applied by the by the rear motor, and we try to run on on, on front wheel drive at highway speeds. Now, this can potentially give us uh, one and a half times the actual torque of the that we have right now. So that would probably fix uh, many of the issues. Um, so once we get the 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 parts for this car, we're going to put it back together, and then we'll go and test it off road and see exactly what's the maximum torque that we can uh, request from the motor by driving it and seeing what it does. So we'll keep you up to date.